slide a stone across ice, it really slides. Put a turn on it, and it tends to go where you want it. Add a target, and you have a game of skill. It all started several centuries ago in Scotland, or Holland, depending upon some mildly disputed differences of opinion. But curling, as it is known around the world today, was developed on the frozen streams, ponds, and lakes of Scotland. The Scots were so excited about the game that they took to playing it in all kinds of weather. And so the broom was introduced to sweep twigs, loose ice, and even falling snow out of the stone's path. Not quite the sleek, chic stretch pants of the modern era, but these were daring young ladies of the gay 90s who swept up a storm on occasion. Ice, rock, and broom. That's how the game began and is basically today. Since then, however, there have been many refinements, many changes. Curling stones are now manufactured with a handle at a standard weight of 42 and a half pounds. The underside of the stone has a running edge which cuts down on friction and increases the effect of the curling motion which helps to hold the stone on line. And needless to say, there are no twigs, loose ice or snowflakes to sweep out of the way. is still very important, however, and when used properly, it helps control the stone. Good sweeping tends to hold the stone on course, and the friction created by the broom slickens the ice and causes a slow stone to move 14 to 18 feet farther down the ice. The official curling rink is a sheet of ice 150 feet long and 14 feet wide. At each end of the ice, there is a target called the house, made up of three rings surrounding a center button. To score, a stone must at least touch the edge of the outer ring. Behind the house is the back line. If a stone is thrown so heavily that it goes past the back line, it is out of play. In front of the house is the hog line. If a stone is thrown so lightly that it fails to reach the hog line, it is taken out of play. At each end of the ice, there is a center line which acts as a guide to the player as he throws or delivers his stones. And to help him deliver properly, there are footholds called hacks cut into the ice at each end of the sheet. Finally, there is the T line which cuts directly through the center of the house. So that's a curling rink from hack to hog line to house. All the markings on curling sheets are in the ice so that nothing flaws the surface. The condition of the ice is important and care is taken to see that the sheets are carefully maintained and properly frozen with a fine pebble surface. Most curling clubs are famous for the consistently good condition of their ice. Curlers never go on the sheets without first cleaning their shoes. A team of curlers is also called a rink and is comprised of four players. The first to play is logically enough called the lead. The others are called second and third or vice skip. The skip is leader of his rink and directs the play from the far end of the sheet. He's a sort of quarterback, captain, and strategy maker all rolled into one. A good skip has the ability to read the ice, to judge the way it will affect the travel of the stone. He may use his broom to indicate where he wants the stone to end up, but always uses it as a target for the curler. The object for the curler is to deliver his stone directly toward the broom, giving it the proper weight, not too heavy, not too light, and the proper turn. The stone must be clean before every shot because the slightest speck of dirt can throw it off course. The curler assumes a comfortable kneeling position, foot firmly in the hack, shoulders squared away so that he faces straight toward the skip's broom. There are two ways the stone can be turned or curled, in toward the curler's body causing it to bend to the right, or out away from the curler's body causing it to bend to the left. 
Bob Warner, skip of the Illinois rink, extends his right hand calling for an intern. The curler starts the intern delivery with a handle straight. With his eye glued on the skip's broom, he slides the stone straight back and then forward, giving it a slight intern. He need not throw the stone hard, but simply lets the weight of the rock work for him. Bud Somerville, skip of the world's champion Wisconsin rink, demonstrates the proper outturn delivery. Now the stone is held differently, with the handle toward the curler's body so that he can turn it out, away from his body, more easily. The rest is the same. Eye on the broom, smooth backswing, shoulders square, and a graceful follow-through as the stone is released. See in slow motion how the curler uses his broom and his outside foot for balance swinging them out as the stone goes back and bringing them together and out of the hack in a smooth slide. There are always two teammates following the stone down the ice, ready to sweep at the skip's command. Good sweepers have rhythm, hitting the ice fast and hard directly in the stone's path. They keep one eye on the stone and the other on where it's headed. If a sweeper accidentally touches the stone with his broom, foot, or any other part of his body, the rock is fouled or burned and is taken out of play before it hits other stones. The man who burns a rock is the first to call it. After each player has delivered two stones and all 16 stones have been played, the score is posted and the players prepare to curl in the opposite direction. This period of play is called an end and is similar to an inning in baseball. We've asked some good curlers to demonstrate some bad mistakes. Riding the stone or leaning on it slows it down and affects direction. Pushing is just as bad and can't correct for a poor delivery. Given a proper backswing, the stone won't need a push. And don't get the idea that this game is only for men. This young lady weighs about 100 pounds and handles the 42-pound rock as easily as a steam iron. She demonstrates one of the most basic shots, drawing in. This means that she has given the rock exactly the right amount of weight, draw weight, and is on the button. Another basic shot is the takeout, which removes an opponent's stone from play by knocking it out of the house. Bud Somerville shows us a long slide. Pushing off from the hack, he traverses the entire length of the ice. This is, of course, never done in a match, but demonstrates the power of the push-off from the hack, which, combined with the momentum of the rock, carries the curler down the ice in perfect balance. Here is a wick shot, which chips off either your own or your opponent's rock and rolls to lie in the house. It is often impossible to determine by eye which stone is closest to the center of the house. For this purpose, measuring devices have been designed which will enable the referee to determine easily and accurately which stone is closer. And the broom can beat to another tempo. The younger generation has brought new excitement to the sport. Probably because they've discovered that curling is a game you'll enjoy right away. The first time out, you'll find yourself playing the game while you learn it. And don't think the junior curlers aren't serious. The excitement of this action-filled sport just naturally leads to team spirit and competition. Matches between high schools, colleges, and universities are a common occurrence. When you think about it, there aren't very many sports that keep you as busy as the roaring game. When you aren't curling, you're sweeping. And when you aren't sweeping, you're perhaps skipping, or second-guessing the skip at any rate. Mixed curling is virtually sweeping the country. Rinks made up of husbands and wives play against rinks in their own club or other clubs. A kind of competition and social gathering called a bond spiel.
the matches are over and the brooms are stacked, one of the nicest things happens. Good company with nice people. The winners treat the losers, because that is one of the traditions of the sport. And you'll never fail to hear a spirited discussion of what might have been were it not for the devilish tricky ice. Bonspiels give curlers an opportunity to travel to out-of-town clubs for large curling competitions, usually involving 20 or more rinks, representing groups from different areas, all sporting their own club jackets, pins, and customs, and all drawn together by a fascinating game and the traditions of hospitality and good fellowship, which are common to curling clubs everywhere. Swapping pins is a fun custom, and you can usually tell how long a curler has been in the game by the number of pins he is wearing. A tradition one can trace back to the early days when the clans of Scotland took their curling seriously. of Scotland still in the club crests and badges of today. In places like Wauwatosa, Waltham, Winnipeg. And why not? Because the game is popular all over. From Alaska to Maryland, from Maine to California. One of the most important curling competitions in North America is the McDonald Briar, held each year in a different province of Canada between the various provincial championship rinks. In these scenes from recent Briar matches, we see curling at its very finest. Watch this delivery. Perfect form, eye on the broom. Good sweeping down the ice. And a double takeout. The stone does the work. The broom is used for balance. And this time, a triple take. In matches such as these, you see sweeping that is sweeping, with rhythm and force that can move a stone to do great things. Watch this. A perfect draw to the button. Or this. Or this. Another double takeout that leaves the stone lying shot. Some say a takeout is not the hardest shot in curling. But what about one that takes out the opponent's rock between two of your counters for a final score of three? you'll see one of the outstanding shots of the matches. Taking out two of the opponent's stones to lie three. This is really championship curling. The kind seen not only at the McDonald Briar, but also at the U.S. Men's Curling Championship, as well as at the famous World Championship Scotch Cup matches. But you don't have to be a champion to get fun out of the game. You don't even have to be very good at it. Because the spirit of the game is the same on the most amateur rink you can find. Curling means good, congenial company, good sportsmanship, good fun, and pride in the game's great traditions. The chances are that even playing on a championship rink will give you no bigger kick than you'll get out of watching your teammate put one right on the button. This is curling.
grab up right now.